My God. Yes. The Bible said when the fullness of time was come, God sent for the Son, made up a woman, made under the law to redeem them that was lost. The Bible was back. That's what it was. Amen. Praise God. So if it's sacrifice and offering, though, what is not a body, though, has prepared me. Because flesh and blood, amen, because the spirit could not die. No, no, no. Let me help it needed a blood sacrifice for cleansing. And that is why they killed bullocks and lamb. When Solomon came to dedicate the temple, the Bible said thousands, thousands of lambs and bullocks were slain. Amen. Praise God upon the altar. Amen. It was like a river running. And even then, that did not forgive sinners. So the Bible says that God, when Adam and Eve sinned, God made a plan to redeem mankind. To bring us back to himself. The plan was Jesus Christ. Only through Jesus. It's the only human sacrifice that God would have accepted from anyone else. That's why when Abraham went to kill Isaac, his son Isaac, yes. amen, he couldn't do it. No, no, no. Because God would not accept any human sacrifice that I'd seen. So Isaac was a type of Christ, representing the Lamb of God that would come and die for us today. Amen, amen. praise God. So the altar writes us then, amen, praise God, that it burnt off in a sacrifice for sin. Thou has no pleasure. Amen. He says, Then I said, Lo, I come in the vault of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Amen. Praise God. This is Psalms 4 and 6 and 8 that the writer refers to. In this psalm, the author was found one of the Old Testament passages that foreshadowed the end of the sacrificial system. He rephrases the psalm to emphasize this point. And he said, beginning by the labor first, to a point that he will come back to shortly. First he said, sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not desire, or were you pleased with them? Then he went on to say, although the law required them to be made, amen, the altar is contrasted between the law required and what God ultimately wanted in other words, what did the law require? The law required the shedding of blood for the covering of sin. Amen. Praise God. But what God ultimately wants is to forgive sin. To remove sin. So that sin will no longer be there. So God gave the law not as a permanent ideal, but just as a temporary sin. Amen. Praise God. It was a schoolmaster. Yeah. It would prepare the way for reality. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Praise God, which is Christ. Amen. The old covenant law was not the final word that God wanted. No. What did he want? He says, here I am. I am come to do your will. Yes. God wanted people to obey. Yes. Not only Christ. Amen. It perfectly. The early church apparently understood these psalms, amen, as the messianic psalms because Jesus fulfilled his word in a way that no psalm writer could ever say. Then comes a powerful conclusion. Amen. Let's jump down to verse 10. He says, by the which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Amen. Pray God. Amen. So he has set aside the first to establish the second. Amen. Praise God. What was the first? What was the first? Was the first the was the first old the first covenant the old covenant. Amen. To establish what a new covenant. So he has set aside the first. Amen. So that he can establish the the second one. The new covenant. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And so in verse 10, he says, and that by that will. Whose will are we talking about? It is God's will. Or Christ's willingness to obey. Amen. 
Praise God. Because since Christ conformed his will to God, and by that same will, it is by God's choice and by Christ's obedience that we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Amen. When he was in the garden of Gethsemane, amen, praise God, amen, he recognized what was going to happen. Hallelujah. Humanity at that point in time recognized the journey and the suffering that we had to bear. And humanity said, I can't do this. Hallelujah. So he cried out. He said, Father, if it be possible, he said, let this cup pass from me. Humanity couldn't comprehend what was that mean. The pain, the agony of sin, how great the burden was. He cried out, Father, if it be possible, he said, if, if it be possible, he knew it was not possible, but he, he had to try. He said, if it be possible, let this come pass. It was too much. He had your sins, my sins, the sin of the world. Good God, have mercy. There was so much. The sin of the prostitute, the drunkard, heresies, reveling, lasciviousness. Good God, have mercy. Backbiting, he felt it. But he said, nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. So he endured the pressure. Went to get oh God got that cross. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God and he suffered on that cross. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So that today we and I we have access into the holy of holy. Yeah. And because of his death and his burial and his resurrection this morning, yeah. we have consecrated yeah. ourselves. Yeah. We have set aside ourselves. For his service. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So that we can enter into the holies of holies. We can kneel and make our petition known. Oh, yes. oh, yes. Jesus. Now we can go into the holies of holies. Now I can kneel Hallelujah. and I can make my petition known. Somebody said, oh, no, I'm just a common man. It's because of his redemption. Why I can boldly approach the throne. Let me, let me help you. Hallelujah. If you sin, make it right. Don't walk around with your sin. Amen. Praise God. Holding on to it. Oh, Hallelujah. Let it go. That's the beauty about grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the beauty about God justifying us. Because our justification came through the blood. Hallelujah. The education blood. That blood over 2,000 years ago. Amen. Praise God. That is still of the power of God to forgive sin. Don't condemn yourself. No. Don't walk around with your head holding down low. But you can go to him. Yes. You can tell him that you have messed up. Yes. That you have done wrong. Yes. Amen. And ask him to forgive you. Hallelujah. The devil has a way sometimes of playing with our minds. Yes. And the guilt. Yes. Amen. Of the past. And the guilt of the thing that you have done. Oh, yeah. 
Amen. The devil rides you with it. Amen. Praise God and make you feel like you're nothing. That you're unworthy. Oh God, a poor worm as I. Oh my God, how can I go to a God? Amen. After what I have done, tell the devil is a liar. Amen. He has taken. Amen. Praise God, my sins. And he has cast it into the sea of forgetfulness. What the law could not do, he has done it. What the law only could cover, he has removed it. He has forgiven it. Do you understand what forgiveness is? He don't remember it. God don't remember your sins. I am a shut up. Hallelujah. I don't care where you did it, how you did it. God forgives sins. Not man. Not man. I don't know why it came so strongly. Not man. Not man. We react. And we pick up yes. stuff that already passed. Yes. 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 God don't hold on to your sins. Oh, if you come to him honestly, yes. if you repent yes. and be truthful to him, yes. he's more than willing to forgive. Yes. And I refuse. I said, I refuse to let the enemy have anything over me. I refuse. It is even last night I mess up. I refuse to let the enemy have anything. They put a woman to Jesus. They said, Master, this woman commit adultery. The law says that we must go to death. Jesus looked at them and said, He that is without sin, pass the first stone. If you are without sin, pass the first stone. Jesus kept on right and put his own business. When he looked up, this woman was all by herself. He said, Woman, where are your accusers? He said to her, Go now, sing no more. Let a word sin come upon you. You might be in here today. Praise God. And you know, praise God, that you're guilty. But he's more than willing to forgive your sin. He came for the sinner. Let me say it again. He came for the sinner. He said, I come for the sinner to call him unto repentance. Amen. Praise God. And take it deal with us, the body. You might be in here today. You are a sinner. You have not yet given your life to the Lord. He came for you. That you might have life and have it more abundantly. It's not one of us. And sometimes I honestly really think that some of us forget where we used to be. And what we used to do. Some of you used to roam the street and do some things. Let me tell you, man. But God snatched you from the mud and saved you. Let's point fingers now, alright? You might be in the house today. And you have not given your life to the Lord. This is your time. 
think that you might have lies and have it more abundantly. If you're in the house, I'm gonna invite you to come. I'm gonna turn the mic over. But if you're in the house today, we're gonna invite you to come. Or if you're saved and there's a guilt that you have that seed that no matter what, so let's come and pray with you. Because we've got to release it from your spirit. Come on, this side. Let the shame of his blood.